Sign the contract, big boy. Sign the contract. No problem. Saturday, July 20th. See you there, buddy. The legendary Iron Mike Tyson, a name synonymous with ferocious knockouts and undisputed heavyweight champion status. In the other, the brash YouTuber turned boxer Jake Paul, who'd made waves challenging fellow social media personalities in the ring. After months of back and forth negotiations, the news finally broke. Tyson and Paul had inked the deal. For Tyson, the allure was a chance to step back into the spotlight, albeit in an exhibition match, a non-professional fight with relaxed rules. It's a bit of fun, rumbled Tyson in his signature deep voice during a press conference. These new guys bring a different kind of energy, gotta respect the hustle. Plus, he chuckled, a hint of his old fire flickering in his eyes. Nobody gets to hang with Iron Mike for free. Paul, on the other hand, saw this as a giant leap in his boxing legitimacy. This is a dream come true, he declared, a wide grin plastered across his face. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Tyson, the man himself? It pushes me to train harder than ever. I'm going to show the world what I'm made of. God damn no. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to see. I want to see how hard he hits, Mike. I, Mike, I, I really want to see, bro. Let's see all the legends, the myths, because you're Iron Mike Tyson, but I have an iron chin. People know that. Like, I, I take shots. So I think people are underestimating that me being able to deal with his power. And that is what something uh, that is going to make it interesting. Obviously. There's no nerves in you at all about this. No, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Like I can't, I literally can't wait to look across the ring and see him and give him a fucking death stare. Wow. The fight announcement wasn't without its share of skepticism. Purists scoffed at the mismatch. A 57-year-old Tyson passed his prime against a young, unproven fighter. I'd rather have a few years of glory than a lifetime of um, obscurity. Yeah, I'd rather die 20 then live to be 60 and be nobody. Yeah. But the truth was, this wasn't just about boxing. It was a clash of generations, a meeting of old school brutality and new age celebrity. So you like the glory, you, you want the glory. I was born for this. I was just born for this. I'm, I think I'm Alexander the Great in another life. The negotiations, however, weren't a walk in the park. There were disagreements over the fight format. Tyson's team pushed for a heavyweight exhibition with lighter, 14-ounce gloves, a nod to his aging body. Paul's camp countered, arguing for standard 10-ounce gloves for a more competitive fight. Gotta protect Iron Mike, argued Tyson's representative, a stern woman with a no-nonsense air. This ain't about him getting hurt. We want a real fight, countered Paul's manager, a sharp dresser with a confident smile. Was the one who wanted it to be a pro fight. Mike got into training camp and called up people on my team and we're like, let's do a pro fight. Is Jake down? Netflix was like, let's make it a pro fight. We're down. And I said to Nikisa, if that's what Mike wants, then that's fine. But make sure you tell Mike that there's no holding back. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. And this is war now. Jake deserves a fair challenge. After days of discussions, a compromise was reached. The fight would be a heavyweight contest with 14 ounce gloves with two minute rounds instead of the usual three. It wasn't ideal for either side, but it paved the way for a spectacle. The announcement sent shockwaves through social media. Paul's fans were ecstatic, their online comments a flurry of hype and excitement. Boxing enthusiasts, on the other hand, were divided. Some were intrigued by the novelty of the fight, while others remained unconvinced. Through it all, the fighters themselves remained focused. I'd be really angry and like on edge. Hell yeah. But I, yeah, that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty scary. Yeah, he's gonna wow. He's gonna be like a caged animal, just pissed the fuck off. Just ready to but I, sock and what's nut. What's weird full is of nut. <laughs> Full of nut and Full of nut. anger, just socking <laughs> nut is all he know. <laughs> but I, 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 for me, I can't do that. Like I don't fight good, angry. Like I fight good when I'm literally trolling and having fun and dancing and relaxed. When there's Tyson, 
known for his intense training routines, dove back into the gym, shedding some pounds and sharpening his reflexes. Paul, already a dedicated athlete, upped the intensity, working on his footwork and power punches. The weeks leading up to the fight were a media frenzy. Press conferences were packed, interview requests flooded in, and sponsorship deals rained down. Both fighters reveled in the attention, using the platform to promote themselves and their upcoming showdown. As the fight date approached, the anticipation reached a fever pitch. Would Tyson recapture a glimpse of his former glory? Could Paul pull off the unthinkable and dethrone a legend? The questions hung heavy in the air, a testament to the captivating nature of this unorthodox fight. One thing was certain. On fight night, the world would be watching. In the boxing world, laughter echoed through gyms and chatter on fight nights buzzed with a different kind of jab. One aimed not at an opponent, but at YouTuber-turned-boxer Jake Paul. The news of his upcoming fight with Mike Tyson wasn't met with cheers, but with a chorus of, You've got to be kidding me! Here was a young social media star with a decent record against fellow influencers, stepping into the ring with a legend. Was it the first, you guys came face to face for the first time just a couple days ago. What was that that face to face like? It, I just laughed. Like I did the face off and then I like walked away and I just laughed to myself. I was like, <laughs> like people could really unlock and accomplish anything they want if they continue to open the doors of opportunity and continue to work hard you never know where things are actually gonna go to and who knows this might be the biggest fight of all time What's up? iron mike tyson a name that sent shivers down spines in his prime the boxing fraternity was having a field day this is a joke right miguel rodriguez a battle-hardened middleweight contender scoffed during his post-fight interview Tyson in his prime would have knocked Paul out in the first round. Now sure, age catches up, but come on, this is disrespectful to the sport. Floyd Mayweather Jr., another boxing icon known for his slick defense and knockout power, chimed in with a sly grin. Hey, it's good business, isn't it? Attention, money, all that. But let's not pretend this is a real fight. It's an exhibition for entertainment, nothing more. A little bit or something uh -huh. like that. I made it come in without jabbing and moving my head. But dude, you were like undefeated for how long? Well, you could be undefeated, but that don't mean you're the best. Right, right. But you were the best. It appeared to be, yeah. You appeared to be? Yeah. But goddamn, he was the best. Look, here's a guy that was the best, and he's saying, no, he, it appeared to be the best. Well, he listen. Knew. I've never been hit with anything with that type of power. And so I think that, um, you know, Mike still got it. So we'll always have the power. It's the last thing to go yeah, for us fighters. The power. Calling no. out Nganu before, now he sounds like he's calling no, out Mike no, Tyson. He's just game. <laughs> Mike passed his time. Everybody knows if they fought when Mike was, you know, really him. Come on, Jake, Jake would die. <laughs> Even retired boxers piled on. George Foreman, a former heavyweight champion known for his thunderous knockout power, chuckled. Tyson's a legend, but Father Time's undefeated. This fight is like watching an old lion chase a gazelle. Sure, it's interesting, but the gazelle ain't winning. Okay, so realizing like how big of a mistake that he made, but I mean, he's an idiot. And so he's not getting shit. So yeah, yeah, literally, literally like the next offer for him is like nothing basically. Um, and like my brand only increases to like a whole nother level. And it's like, we probably would have been 50-50 for that fight and now it's like after this and everything dog. i feel like a mega fight is like an understatement though like where do you where do you go from this fight downhill yeah this is my peak <laughs> no, you peaked this, this is it this is it i better soak it all in. no i think i think it just back to the path of world championship which will i think continue to blow people's minds the criticism wasn't just about the mismatch Many boxing veterans felt Paul, despite his wins, lacked the experience and pedigree to share the ring with someone like Tyson. Respect is earned in the ring, not on YouTube, said Sergio Martinez, a former world champion known for his relentless pressure fighting. Paul's fought a bunch of internet personalities. This is the big leagues now, kid. There were concerns for Tyson as well. You have to remember that. My mother, I have to decimate her as well. This is business, it's just business, nothing personal.
So, so when you brought your feelings into the ring, did that, did that interfere with your ability to win? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Because once your feelings are in the ring, you think about, wow, I don't want to get hit, I'm this and that, and you're apprehensive. And once you're apprehensive, it's over with. Yeah. Evander Holyfield, another heavyweight legend who famously lost a part of his ear to Tyson's bite in a past fight, expressed his worries. Mike's a warrior, but he's not a young man anymore. This exhibition stuff can be dangerous. I just hope they prioritize safety over spectacle. The criticism wasn't entirely negative. Some, like Sugar Ray Leonard, a legendary welterweight champion known for his dazzling speed, saw a positive side. Hey, it brings attention to boxing, he admitted. Maybe it'll get some younger folks interested in the real thing. But the undercurrent remained. This was a publicity stunt, a mockery of the dedication and sacrifice boxers put in. There's a difference between throwing punches on YouTube and facing a heavyweight legend in a professional setting, said Andre Ward, a former undefeated champion known for his tactical brilliance. Even Tyson's former trainers weren't shy about their opinions. Mike's a shadow of his former self, said a grizzled old trainer, shaking his head. This fight shouldn't happen. It tarnishes his legacy and puts him at risk. That's the two biggest things, but the third is that we know what Tyson fights like. So interestingly enough, with a lot of my opponents, there's not tons of footage. So for a lot of those camps, I couldn't prepare for Nate Diaz because there's no footage of Nate Diaz boxing. Yeah, we know he's a southpaw. Yeah, we know he's going to come forward. But what specifically is he good at in the sport of boxing? We didn't know. So with Mike Tyson, there's hours and hours of footage out there. Sure, some of it's from when he's young, but it's the same style. So we know exactly what he's going to do, which is to our advantage because we can train for those specific things to have counters built in, which also is fun because we've, again, never really had that. Through it all, Paul remained unfazed. He used the criticism to fuel his training, posting videos on social media, showcasing his improved skills and unwavering confidence. They can doubt me all they want, he declared in one video. On fight night, I'm going to shock the world. Would he? Only time would tell. But one thing was certain. The boxing world was watching, not with anticipation for a competitive fight, but with a morbid curiosity to see how this audacious spectacle would unfold. Day three. Day three. You still want to fuck with me? Still want to fuck with me? The mere mention of Mike Tyson sent shivers down the spines of even the toughest boxing veterans. His name wasn't just synonymous with heavyweight champion status, it was a terrifying whisper of raw power and ferocious finishing. When boxing pros reminisced about Tyson, their voices took on a different tone, a mix of respect and awe reserved for a force of nature. Iron Mike, Evander Holyfield, the man who famously lost a part of his ear to Tyson's bite, rumbled with a deep chuckle. He was something else. Fastest hands I ever saw coming at you like a freight train. You barely had time to blink before you were asleep on the canvas. I'm fun in it. I think he genuinely thinks he's going to win and so do I. So, of course. How does it feel that you're not the scarier guy in these press conferences this time? That's a scary motherfucker. That is true. <laughs> like you're not the, the big and bad one. <laughs> I'm not the big bad wolf anymore. Yeah, that's true. He's like, fit. what's his record? 50 and 6 or something. Oh, my days. You're just taking deep breaths. Yeah, breath. sorry. That was seriously bad. But what if he knocks you out? Like, is that your last one? <laughs> Can we get a she what if he knocks you out asking. counter, please? Yeah, no, I, I just she want to, on. like, get the scenarios. Like, he, He's not. He's not going to. No, but to. what if... Lennox Lewis, another heavyweight legend who finally dethroned Tyson, nodded solemnly. He wasn't just strong. He was explosive. Every punch felt like it could cave your chest in. You had to be perfect for all 12 rounds because one mistake... Lewis trailed off, shaking his head at the memory. Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., the Mexican boxing icon who dominated the lighter weight classes during Tyson's reign, offered a different perspective. He was intimidating, sure, 
Chavez admitted. But all that focus, that rage, it had a weakness. He could get emotional, predictable even. A smart fighter could exploit that. You know, you got to make your money, and um, at the end of the day, it's, it's entertainment. You know, you got YouTubers. Boxing is, boxing is all messed up now. But... However, most boxers agreed. Facing Tyson in his prime was like staring down a hungry lion. There was no feeling you out, no testing the waters, Larry Holmes, another former heavyweight champion, explained. He came out swinging from the opening bell, looking to end it all in one go. Even Mike Tyson himself acknowledged the intensity he brought to the ring. I wasn't there to box, he said in a recent interview, his voice still carrying the remnants of his Brooklyn upbringing. I was there to hurt you, to take you out. That's what the people wanted, that's what I craved. Trainers who witnessed Tyson's rise to dominance spoke of a fighter unlike any other. He was a prodigy, Cus D'Amato, Tyson's legendary trainer, once said in a dusty interview clip. Raw talent, unmatched speed, and a hunger that burned brighter than anything I'd ever seen. Kevin Rooney, another of Tyson's trainers, elaborated on the meticulous training that honed Tyson's natural gifts. We drilled him on precision, on transferring all that power into focused punches. It was a beautiful, terrifying thing to watch. But some fighters, while acknowledging Tyson's undeniable talent, questioned his longevity. We didn't have judgment on ourselves or as others. You could just run around the playground and scream and yell. Bro, that's why you hear me going around the fucking house, making Bro, noises all day long. be barking and like... That's my new <laughs> thing is the seal. <laughs> Every Apolog day. He burned bright. But he burned fast, said George Foreman, the former heavyweight champion known for his own devastating knockout power. The intensity he brought was a double-edged sword. It took a toll on him. Floyd Mayweather Jr., the undefeated defensive maestro, offered a similar sentiment. He could overpower anyone in his prime, Mayweather admitted. But could he adapt? Could he adjust his style when the speed went down? That's the question mark. Despite the questions and concerns, one thing remained clear. Mike Tyson's era in boxing was a spectacle unlike any other. His fights weren't just sporting events, they were captivating, often brutal displays of raw power and unwavering will. Even today, his name evokes a sense of awe and a reminder of the gladiator-like nature of professional boxing in its rawest form. Boxing fans were left reeling after Mike Tyson's explosive interview. When asked about the possibility of a fight with YouTuber-turned-boxer Jake Paul, Iron Mike didn't mince words. I'm back, baby, he boomed in his signature deep voice. And I'm ready to fight that Paul kid. They say exhibition, nah, this is gonna be a real fight, and I ain't there to dance around, I'm there to finish him. The comment, laced with a chilling finality, sent shockwaves through the boxing world. Was Tyson, a legend past his prime, seriously considering stepping back into the ring with a much younger, unproven opponent. And more importantly, were those comments about finishing Paul a genuine threat or simply bravado? Yeah. Well, buddy, good news is you're going to get knocked the fuck out on July oh, 20th. Shit. Oh, you really geez. think that? Um, so here's the thing, man. Uh, you know, Iron Mike Ty I love you for free, okay? <laughs> but, uh, you know, fuck, there comes a yeah, point in time yeah. where you got to be realistic. And you might be taking a big bite of his ear, artist. And I am literally knocking the fuck out of the competition. You're going to the Olympics in two years. And then that's going to be when I'm probably going to be fighting for a world championship. And so we both could potentially be world champions, number one in the world together. Olympic champion. Boxing pundits were quick to react. This is a terrible idea, said Roy Jones Jr., a former champion who himself had a controversial exhibition bout with Tyson in 2020. Mike's a warrior, but father time is undefeated. This fight is more dangerous than entertaining. Many echoed Jones's concerns. Tyson's legacy is secure, argued Teddy Atlas, a renowned boxing trainer. Why risk serious injury over a fight that benefits no one but promoters and YouTubers? But amidst the caution, there was a flicker of intrigue. Look, it'll sell, admitted Sergio Martinez, a former world champion known for his relentless fighting style. People are curious, 
But is it a fair fight? Absolutely not. This is called an exhibition. But if you look up exhibition, you will not see any of the laws that we're fighting under. This is a fight. Then it's different, like... That's why I think there's like a loss of respect there. Well, so then what's going on with you guys? Because the last episode on here, there was shit talk back and forth. He was saying stuff about you on Twitter. You called him. There was more shit talk. Has there, have you guys talked anymore? Is that actually a fight that could happen? I think it could happen as like an exhibition probably. Just because you couldn't But I think he thinks that he would win and I would love to just like inf def deflate his little 130 pounds. Just <laughs> That's the only way it could happen, right? His exhibition just for the weight. Yeah. And the boxing community wasn't the only one divided. Fans, particularly those of Tyson's generation, were torn. Some saw it as a chance to witness a glimpse of the Iron Mike of old, the ferocious knockout artist who dominated the heavyweight scene. Others worried about Tyson's health and well-being. Meanwhile, Jake Paul himself remained unfazed by Tyson's comments. In fact, he embraced the challenge, posting a video on social media where he confidently stated, Iron Mike, more like Rusty Mike, this is the fight the world wants to see and I'm going to expose him. The back and forth ignited a media frenzy. Debates raged on sports shows, analysts dissected the potential dangers, and fans flooded social media with their opinions. It was clear, whether the fight happened or not, it was already a marketing goldmine. Through it all, Mike Tyson stood firm. In a follow-up interview, he clarified his stance. Maybe I shouldn't have said kill him, he admitted, a hint of amusement in his voice. But let's get real. This is a fight. There's going to be punches thrown and someone might get hurt. I just want people to understand I'm coming to win. Whether this was a genuine comeback attempt by a legend yearning for one last hurrah or a carefully orchestrated spectacle to capitalize on nostalgia remained to be seen. One thing was certain. Mike Tyson's return to the ring, even as a possibility, had reignited the conversation about boxing, its dangers, and its enduring allure.